Being a zookeeper involves much more than just taking care of and feeding the animals. These people have to focus on conservation efforts and making sure the most endangered species in the world don't die out. But just how big is that? How big is 400,000 cubic yards? Turns out it's enough to fill this entire stadium all the way to the very top. Many students and faculty say they feel inconvenienced by the ongoing construction on campus, yet they're looking forward to the $20 million renovation due in the fall of 2013. Sure, the royal palm trees on the campus of the University of Miami look beautiful, but each of these can cost upwards of $50,000. That's enough for a year's worth of tuition, room and board included. The food truck frenzy has taken over Miami, with many people in Coconut Grove coming to this one on a hot day for an ice. When people come to the Humane Society of Broward County, they just see a cute face like nutmegs over here. But what they don't realize is that there is a huge economic responsibility that comes with owning a pet. Thanks, Lindsay. The Port of Miami Tunnel is a multi-billion dollar project taking place in our own backyard. Most know that the tunnel means for the port, but they haven't really taken a closer look. The tunnel boring machine will excavate a massive amount of dirt, which will be dumped on the Virginia Key landfill, a historically toxic site. But this has many people asking what lies beneath. With traffic this bad in and out of the Port of Miami, it's easy to see why the much needed improvements to its 50 year old infrastructure are long overdue. To solve the problem, the city of Miami contracted a transnational firm, Miami Access Tunnel, to construct a massive tunnel under government cut, connecting the Port of Miami to highways I 95 and I 395 by way of neighboring Watson Island. The $1 billion project is scheduled for completion by 2014. When the tunnel boring machine, which is uh, four stories high, football field long, is digging through the coral stone uh, underneath Watson uh, Island here, makes its way underneath government cut, then onto Dodge Island, the spoils will come out on that, uh, on that uh, conveyor belt behind me. What's coming out is limestone rock injected with special softening agents to make digging easier. But what's in these softening agents is a closely guarded secret. And that's raising concerns. With the unknown greasing agents and polymers and foamers that the, the boring machine is going to use to extract the rock, um, who knows what's going to be in there. And with a project this big, we aren't talking about one or two truckloads of dirt. We're talking about 400,000 cubic yards. But just how big is that? How big is 400,000 cubic yards? Turns out, it's enough to fill this entire stadium, all the way to the very top. Much of the soil will wind up dumped in a landfill on Virginia Key. The Miami Herald reports that biomedical trash and sewage sludge are just a few of the substances already deposited here. Investors and environmentalists wonder if the new project is inviting disaster. To me, just, just capping a toxic landfill that's been around since the 60s with two to three feet of dirt isn't going to prevent what's actually underneath from leaching into the bay. City officials say that the dirt removed from the tunnel undergoes extensive testing, resulting in two possible outcomes. Based on those results, the decision is made to either A, approve the reuse because it meets the criteria, or B, require proper disposal because it does not meet the criteria. City officials implemented a three-tiered system that determines how the extracted soil can be used depending on its toxicity. Only fill deemed to be residential quality or better can be accepted. Our agreement with the tunnel contractor is that it has to be residential quality material and it has to be tested by the correct permitting authority. Ongoing testing will continue. Ultimately, the city of Miami wants to turn the Virginia Key landfill into a recreation area, complete with soccer and baseball fields. But even those in favor of the idea are concerned about the potentially toxic materials lurking underneath. I don't plan to play there. Okay, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Despite environmental concerns, construction continues. So far, the first test batches of the soil are reported to be clean. And while the traffic snarl is likely to be resolved by the billion dollar effort, it's still much too early to tell what potential environmental problems the project could dig up. Back to you at the news desk. Everybody is feeling the effects of the recession, even family pets. I went to the Humane Society of Broward County to see how animals are faring in these tough times. The dog days linger on for the animals at the Humane Society of Broward County. 
Last year, over a half million dogs and cats nationwide were surrendered by their owners due to the economic recession. Sherry Watcher, a volunteer at this shelter, says this is becoming a big problem. Five years ago, um, you might get you know, one or two animals a week that were surrendered because their families could no longer afford to take care of them. Now we might get as many as 10 or 20 a week. And this trend is not exclusive to South Florida. It has been seen in shelters all over the country. When people come to the Humane Society of Broward County, they just see a cute face like nutmegs over here. But what they don't realize is that there's a huge economic responsibility that comes with owning a pet. According to the ASPCA, owning a cat or dog could cost over $1,000 annually, which in an economic recession could be hard to come by. Eight-year volunteer Gwen has seen firsthand why people have given up their pets. You see a lot of people moving and they can't take their animals with them. Um, people losing jobs, foreclosures, that's a big one too. If you don't have a home, then you're going to surrender your dog. But this particular shelter is doing all it can to make owning a pet as affordable as possible. We've tried to be creative to get more people into the shelter. One thing that we did was we did Wagon Wednesday, so adoption prices were half. Um, we reduced the adoption fee for kittens to $50. So far, these plans have worked, putting the shelter in a top position in a national adoption campaign. But even still, they continue to fill up with new animals each day. There are thousands of homeless animals waiting for a second chance. Um, oftentimes, you know, these animals are here for no fault of their own. But for those in the position to adopt, this means that there are more animals to choose from than ever before. And you can bet they'll never want to talk money. KT Francisco, UMTV. The Miller School of Medicine is at the forefront of health and medical research in the country. But research doesn't always involve lab rats and autopsies. I visited a local preschool where the children are the test subjects, but they're having too much fun to notice. We could call this an ordinary preschool class, but these four and five-year-olds actually like eating their broccoli. The tots at the O'Farrell Learning Center know that vegetables are important for their hearts, and the milk they wash it down with will give them calcium for healthy bones. The school is just one of the handful of Miami centers involved in a three-year research program, Healthy Caregivers, Healthy Children, under the direction of Dr. Ruby Natali. So the USDA funded um, University of Miami. They gave us $1 million to work with 24 child care centers in the community. And the focus really was on developing a role modeling curriculum. According to the CDC, more than 17% of children in the U.S. are obese. But this program aims to reverse that with nutritional lessons, exercise plans, and healthy diets. The 12 schools that are the intervention centers um, get menu changes to make the menus healthier. They get the role modeling curriculum with the parents and with the teachers, and then they get a child curriculum called Organ Wise Guys. And at the center of this Organ Wise curriculum is Organ Annie. The doll is made specifically for teaching young children about their bodies and how they work. Annie's body parts, the Organ Wise Guys, actually come out of her to show the kids where they go and what they need to do to keep them healthy. As complex as, as it is to learn about the organs, I think they'll always remember you know, where their heart is um, more because it's hearty heart, the cute little stuffed animal. And it doesn't stop after school. The educators at O'Farrell send home nutritional newsletters and surveys for the parents to fill out. And their homework is to try new, healthy foods. When the kids go shopping with their parents, the parents are saying, I can't believe my kid knows what a zucchini is now and what an eggplant is, and they're asking me to buy it. The Healthy Caregivers Healthy Kids program is only in its second year, but parents, teachers, and program supervisors agree that the effects are already being felt. We're seeing a lot of behavioral changes right now. We're right in the middle of the study, but just from what I'm hearing and what the parents are saying when they go to the grocery store, and their children ask them, Mom, buy me the milk with the blue cap, not the milk with the red cap. So parents are just amazed at how, you know, their, their kids are able to make these better choices. So the future for these tykes should be healthy and strong. Because when it comes to nutrition, these little bodies can already see the big picture. KT Francisco, UMTV. Good evening and welcome to News Vision. I'm KT Francisco. The media storm over Trayvon Martin's untimely death is inadvertently spurring a quickly growing brand. For the first time since sexual harassment claims threatened his GOP presidential bid, Herman Cain is preparing to meet face-to-face -face with voters in Michigan. And after accusations of campaign violations are resolved, student government finally has a new president. 
Well, a group of JetBlue passengers got a stop they didn't bargain for when their plane made an emergency landing at Amarillo, Texas. When we come back, a Republican presidential candidate makes a big whoops. The final Coral Gables Farmers Market of the Year has been designated UM Day. They may as well call it Black Thursday. Walmart announced that this year it will open its doors at 10 p.m. on Thanksgiving night across the nation. Coming up on News Vision, a rally to support the family of Trayvon Martin right here on campus as new details about the incident come out. Egyptian officials say seven American and eight other foreign democracy workers facing trial on charges of investigating unrest posted bail and have left the country.